We read words, we read images. Words make up our spoken language. Images have a language too, a language that uses colours and shapes, content and mood. All of these things make meaning. It takes time to paint an image, but what is amazing is that we can read it all at once, at a glance. He is a fuzzy little creature. He's a nice shade of buttery yellow. I think it's Nob. He's holding his feet like a very small child does, maybe to comfort himself. He's quite alone. I wish I could help. And this space around him, it's chaotic. It's jumbled. Things are piled up, not carefully placed. Is that a window? And what's this stuff? Boxes, crates, makes me want to sneeze just looking at it. All this stuff, it's unsorted, uncared for. The value of these things is uncertain, like nothing here matters to anyone. Maybe there are treasures here, but who would know? This is not a little boutique. The things here are not placed on shelves with a pretty tag to tell you what they're worth. There's no pleasant shop assistant to tell you the story of the things for sale. This is the Dumporium, Oddmint's Dumporium. I don't think Mr. Oddmint even knows there's a little bear on one of the many heaping heaps of goods, old and rumpled. No, this is a place where you might get lost, very lost, and wander about through the dusty mountains forever. If you ever got lost in a department store, you'd know how not felt. At the moment you know you're lost, you're suddenly very small in the world around you, is as big as the universe. And if you did get lost, you might climb up high to get a view. And so Nop sits high on a heaping heap. But what does he see? A window, a grand window that lets the light in. Maybe it would let not out. It's a high window. Things are not so simple. What Nop needs is a plan, an idea. An idea is hard to think of in this unlit and lonely place. He's sitting because he's waiting for a thought. But he's stuck just now. He's stuck just looking at chairs and junk, waiting for an idea. And an idea can be frustrating to wait for. And his head feels woollier than usual. Perhaps if this illustrator stopped drawing all this rubbish. But it's clear that Nop wants to be somewhere else.
Lanterns float over Nop's head, big paper lanterns, beautiful and out of reach. It's getting darker outside, but Nop never takes his eyes from the window, and those lovely lanterns float like clouds. I lived in an industrial area once, a place that had once been farms, now full of large and smelly factories, dusty roads and litter, a place where no one wanted to live. I learned to love clouds there, those big, amazing clouds that look like giant meringues. I loved looking at the sky because when you look up at the sky, you can be anywhere, some place wonderful even. It's getting gloomier in the Dumporium, a little darker, a little dustier. But those lanterns are shining bright, and all the while the illustrator keeps drawing all this rubbish, and Nop keeps thinking and thinking. He's thinking about that window, that sea green window. The longer he looks, the clearer his plan becomes. Perhaps it's time that we saw this little bear more clearly. A bit of ink here, a bit of ink there. He's not plush in places, no button, no ribbon, no scarf or spangle.
and he sits on that heaping heap. There's an umbrella, cupboards, crates, wheels, chairs, more stuff, a bicycle, don't know what the boat's doing there, darker and dustier. Few more shadows. And a bit more light. Those little speckles are like little tea lights lighting up. You know, those paper lanterns might even have given Nob the idea he needed. A balloon, something that could take a little bear up and out of that big sea green window to his great chance of adventure. A life outside the Dumporium. Nob does fly away from the Oddminster Dumporium in a balloon he made himself. I loved that part of the story. When I was writing Nob, I got to that part of the story and I was up there with him, up in the clouds. For a while I wasn't even sure when or where we might come down. When Nop flies away, he is a small speck in the world, but there's an important difference. He had an idea in his head. A picture can tell us so much at a glance. We understand images before we even put them into words. We all read images, it's a language we all know. 